Welcome guys back to another episode of the Higher Level Podcast. Um, so this evening as always I'm joined by Higher Level Head Coach James Doolan. Um, and tonight our special guest is UFC heavyweight Tom Aspinall. So Tom, obviously we're on we're on lockdown at the moment. Um, what, what are you doing to keep your sanity? I know you you've obviously got young kids, so uh, how are you keeping yourself sane and and fit at the moment? Yeah, so I try and get like at least one workout in a day. I'm just trying to work on stuff that I've not really had a chance to work on with, with training and stuff like just my flexibility and that is dreadful, and it always has been. So I'm just trying to work, trying to get a little bit more flexible. Trying to get what workouts I can in in the garden, basically. Um, like I say, I've got I've got three young kids, so that keeps me busy enough. So that that passes the time. To be honest, if it wasn't for the kids, I think I'd be struggling. To be honest, just doing nothing all day every day. So I'm uh, I'm happy to have them really. I think uh, well, uh, everybody on the now, James has got uh, James has got a young kid. I've got young kids and. Kind of looks like for people without young kids, it looks like a bit of a party lockdown is, but it's a it's a totally different lockdown for people with young kids. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, I mean, I've got three kids. My my oldest kids are three. Yeah, and then I've got twins that are just literally. It was a birthday yesterday or the day before, so the first birthday. So I've got really small kids. Yeah, so. so <laughs> Ah, uh, so you'll no be you'll really no be getting a minute. Then you'll be you'll be full on twenty four seven, just about. Yeah, mate. I I don't sit down that much. Mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a pretty lazy guy as well, so I like to sit down every now and again. So <laughs> you know, I get more rest when I'm training and stuff. I think. Uh, well, that's it. And it, do, we were, obviously with a wee bit of technical difficulty earlier, we were speaking a wee bit about you obviously signed with the UFC, you're ready to go at UFC London and then it cancelled so late in the day. Um, is it a bit frustrating? You finally signed with the UFC, that's that's what you're aiming for. You've got the fight booked and then all this happens and it's completely taken out of your hands. A little bit, mate, yeah, but this is life, isn't it? What can you do? There's a lot worse yeah. things happening in the world than than a fight getting cancelled, do you know what I mean? So, you know, I think a lot of fighters and stuff, uh, me included in this, uh, for when I was younger and stuff, um, they take fighting, like, too serious. Obviously, mm-hmm. like, I was upset when, when the fight was off and stuff like that. And on the, day, on the day that I was supposed to be fighting, I was pissed off that I wasn't fighting. But at the end of the day, it's just a sport, do you know what I mean? There's people out there who are literally dying right now. So we just we just got to see if what it is, man. It's a sport, and we'll be able to do it again whenever. And let's just crack on. Do you know what I mean? It, it, obviously, it's upsetting. I put a lot of lot of time into it, and a lot of effort and money and time away from the family and all the rest of it. But it's all right. Like it's just a sport. And I guess the other thing is you've you've got that you've got that UFC contract. You're in there now, and when you look at the UFC in that heavyweight division. Um, what do you think? How how quickly do you think you can uh, go through that division and get get up into that top ten and start competing against? To be honest, those I, top guys? I'm looking. I, I'm not looking to do anything quickly. I'm yeah. 26. Oh, sorry, I'm just turned 27 the other day. Um, I ain't looking to do anything quickly. I'm looking to do it slowly. To be honest, mm. I'm not. Um, I'm not very experienced. I've had ten amateur. I've had nine amateur fights and and nine pro fights. It's not a lot of experience that, and the heavyweight division is wide open. So. I'd like to just fight a few guys just to get more experience, just to get more time in there and, and work from that, really. I'm not looking to you know, win, win a belt in the next three years or be in the top ten, maybe the top ten in, in the next three years, but nothing nothing crazy right now. I just want to do it the, the clever way and get the right fights at the right time, not not run before I can walk kind of thing. Yeah, I think at uh, heavyweight as well, there's, at 27, you'll be one of the younger heavyweights there because... Generally, the guys are all are all a bit older. Most of them kind of pushing forty and stuff. So you get plenty of time to to get in there and develop and grow and and, and make a run at it proper. No, definitely. Um, like you say, it's usually the heavy heavyweights seem to like prime around around about late thirties, early forties even. So I, I know I've got a lot of time and stuff. So I'm not I'm not in a rush to do anything. You know, a lot of a lot of UK guys, especially. 
not not just heavyweights, just anyone. I feel like they just rush. They rush, yeah. have a couple of fights, win one, lose one, win one, lose two, something like that. And then the back fight on local shows again, that, I don't want to do that kind of thing. You know what I mean? I want to be here and, and have a good go at it and learn my trade as I'm going. I'm not trying to like it. Um, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be clever about it and, and do the right thing. And it's the other thing as well, especially with the UK. Obviously, we've got a lot of fighters that have went through the UFC, but we've not had a lot of heavyweights go through the UFC. Um, so I think a lot of people are looking at you. Obviously, seeing how talented you are. We had a chance to speak to uh, Big Mo Mustafa. I believe you've you've trained with Big Mo before. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, listen, you said only good things. You said he's trained with uh, a lot of top level guys, but especially he spoke so highly about your your boxing and just when he was in there with you, it says you, you, it felt different in there. He basically just said how how good you were, how special you were, um, and also the other thing is you've you've had a lot of boxing rounds with like, the likes of Tyson Fury. The, the highest level uh, heavyweight out there at the moment. So, what what is that like for you? That sort of experience. Uh, that that's really that's like experience that you can you just can't buy that thing. Do you know what I mean? Just to spar with someone like that good on a regular basis. But not even that. You know what? What I learned most was obviously I learned about boxing and stuff like that. But what I learned most about being so around someone like that regular is like. That kind of mentality rubs off on you, I think. And you know with, with him, I've said this in interviews before and that, he does not take it serious at all. Mm. In fact, he doesn't take boxing serious at all. But I think I was um, guilty of doing it the other way. I was taking it too serious before. And, you know, I'm not really a serious kind of, a bit of a kind of jokey, easygoing guy. And I was taking MMA like mega serious. If I didn't, if like I fucked one thing up in, in sparring or, especially in my fights, it'd like, the, the whole fight would go to shit because I made one mistake, you know what I mean? And he'd be in there and people would be throwing absolute bombs at him in sparring. And he just, he just wouldn't be bothered. He'd just be giggling and laughing about it. And like I say, like I just mentioned a minute ago, he'd just seen it for what it was and it's just boxing or it's just MMA, you know what I mean? It's nothing more than a sport. So, so I, I try and, I, I took a lot from it mentally as well as obviously improving at boxing as well but see when you see when you made that change uh, you started changing mentally and, and starting to appreciate it that way like not taking it as serious how big a difference did you notice in just your performances and in the cage massive massive um, well I've only fought a couple of times since mm. but they've all been first round first round TKOs you know what I mean and I've been feeling just so much better you know what I mean I'm just because when I was doing MMA before, uh, I had like a two-year break. I think I was like 23 or something like that at the time. I didn't have any kids or anything. And then I had the kids. I went boxing for a little bit of come back. And it just changes you, doesn't it? You know, like you see you see it for what it really is. And what it really is is just just a sport. Yeah. You know, don't get me wrong. It, it, mean, it means a lot to me. It's a massive part of my life. But it, it's not who I am. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I, I've been studying, you know, when you're fighting, James will be able to relate to this as well. He's like, um, when, when you're in there, you think that every single person in the crowd is watching your every move. And you think like, when you, well, this is just something that I don't, I've never really spoke to anyone about it before, so maybe James will disagree, I don't know. But I've been stood there in the cage thinking like, oh, how, how shall I stand here? Like, I, I, what's the right way to kind of stand <laughs> So that everyone like looks over and think, and then like since I thought that I've been back and been watching shows, and you're looking around in the crowd and no one's even fucking watching. <laughs> like, not exactly like you're standing before you fight or what? Like it doesn't matter. No one's really asked. You have that fight, and then you whether you win, whether you win or lose or perform good or perform bad, you go back to the change room. And another fight comes on. It doesn't really matter about anything really. So I just kind of like stop taking it serious and, and just start enjoying it and, and start doing that mate my performances have just been a lot better it's really um, it's a smart observation that man it, it's totally true like there's the people in the crowd don't, don't give a fuck most of the time no, they're, not they're, just, they're just there for a night there's your, your friends and, and your teammates and stuff care and 
they're invested in. But I, I was at your last fight, man. I was there with Luke Shanks, Bob Menger, uh, before. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. Before, and we actually we were driving home and we stayed just to watch your fights. And I'd heard about, like, there's some hype coming for you for your previous fight and, and stuff. And I remember watching you walk out and you were so relaxed, like what you were saying there, but you looked so comfortable and stuff. And, and we were like, the French guy was massive and he, he looked pumped. And it was completely contrast because you were so relaxed and calm. And, and then when you took him out, like you, you, you took, knocked him out cold. I can remember with, with the guys in the car on the way home just being like, you'll be in the UFC next, like you'll not see him at Cage Warriors again because it, it was impressive, man. But it, it looks like that lesson you've took for the time with Tyson Fury about not making it life and death, like it's just, it's just fighting, like you say. Is, is crossed over really well and, and it's, it's working for you really well yeah well it's hard to see that when you're young I think I mean I know I'm still am young but when you're like early 20s you're still kind of finding yourself as a person a little bit I think and um, yes. I don't know like fighting's kind of like an alpha thing right and I'm not really anyone who, who knows me like I'm 6 foot 6 I'm like 120 kilos but I'm not like alpha at all but it's quite like an alpha sport and you feel like I was finding myself that I need to try and be like, you know, aggressive and it's just not me. Do you know what I mean? And you've got to find what works for you. I'm not saying what works for me or work for everyone else because it won't, but um, just going back to that fight you said about the fella, is it Luke, Luke Shanks, is it? Yeah. Paul Menga. Yeah. So I know Menga. I know Menga personally. Yeah. Um, he's from like near where I'm from. And uh, I remember seeing him before his fight and he looked angry. This was literally like, we weren't in the same changing rooms, but like we was around each other. And he looked, um, he looked serious and angry. And I remember looking at him and thinking, you know what, that, that doesn't seem like it's a good place to be before you fight. I don't know, everyone's different, but I remember looking at him thinking, he looks like he's fucking going to get hung or something. You know what I mean? He, did, he, didn't, yeah. he looked mega serious about it, but you know, well, I'm not serious in the gym. I'm pissing about. I'm taking the piss out of people. I'm getting the piss taken out of me. I'm making noises when I'm sparring. I'm doing all kinds of weird shit. And why should you not do that when you fight as well? A hundred percent, man. I think uh, I think when when you get that angry and stuff as well, when you get emotionally involved in fights, you, you're more prone to making mistakes and stuff as well. Um, I, I think that's what happened with Menga that night. He got a wee bit of a bad run of form. And I think him and Luke had been niggling each other at the way in and stuff, which Luke, Luke enjoys all that shit. He does it on purpose, but he yeah. he's not an angry wee guy. He's like, he's like you, he's dead laid back, and, and he's always clowning about in the gym. And he's, he was like that in the change room that night. He was messing about with stuff and he was trying to steal tape off the, the guy wrapping the hands or whatever else. But it's, <laughs> it's, an, it's interesting that you've got that. You know this stuff, did you? At 27, like just signed for the UFC and, you, and you're aware of that already because with, with some guys I see this quite a lot as a coach it come, that, that knowledge comes to them late they take it far too serious um, and, and they, they get too much invested in it and they dwell on mistakes and stuff whereas if they start not enjoying training and stuff like that as well and that, that just makes it a, an ordeal the whole the whole process becomes an ordeal whereas the guys are in and they're enjoying yeah. training being with their teammates and or enjoying being backstage and, and, and they enjoy the fight, they guys always tend to be better for what I've experienced. It all comes from experience, doesn't it, I think. Like, I've been, I've been that guy who takes it mega serious and puts a lot of pressure on yourself and does all the rest of that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, it doesn't. you've got to go through that, though. You, you, you can't just wake up and think, oh, I'm not going to be serious about it. It's not going to work like that. You've got to have gone, you've got to have experienced it and realise it doesn't work for you. But, on the other side of the coin, it does work for some people, doesn't it? So, yeah. But I, I just mean for me personally, with my personality and my my game and stuff, because um, my game is quite reactive as well. I like to draw people in and, and counter them and stuff like that. Um, you can't do that with with an emotional mindset going going into it because you can't set traps for someone if you, you, you're emotional. It's just not going to work. You've got to be in a playful mindset to to set traps and, and do stuff like that and use good footwork and um, like I say just, just trap setting and, and baiting someone properly you can't do that while 
being emotional at all. The only emotion that goes through me is is just like happiness and enjoying it really when I'm when I'm in that kind of in that kind of game playing. If, um, if if we take a look at your gym for a minute, you're, you're at Team Calbon, prob- probably the best gym in the UK, um, most successful in terms of number of guys going to the UFC and stuff. Does, does the coach here, Colin Hearn, help you with that, try to find a, a style of fighting that suits your personality? Because if you look at the guys, it's the great fighters that have came out of that gym, none of them are really the same. Like I, I, I came up at, at Cage Gladiator with, with Terry Etham and, and Paul Sass were fighting and and these guys, and if you watch them, none of them were the same. They, they all had like solid fundamentals, but they all had their own their own style of games. And where a lot of gyms you get, a lot of guys are just be robots, not just copy each other, and it's almost like a style of the gym. But with, when you watch the Calbon guys, they're all completely different. Even like right through to now with Darren Till, he's doing stuff that none of the previous generation of Calbon guys have done before. Is that something? That, yeah. I mean, you just kind of like it's for me personally. It's something that Colin and uh, my dad have, have they they know me really well. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, my dad he's been there all my life. Colin's been there since I've, I've known Colin since I was like ten or something like that, twelve maybe. I don't know, but they both know me personally, so they they know I have obviously a personal relationship with both of them. So they encourage what's best for me. And they know now through tri- trial and error, through all the all my other fights, that what mindset I need to be in beforehand, and they just try and get me in that. So I can't speak for the other lads and stuff, because um, obviously they all have different relationships with with the coach. But um, Colin and my dad and and the other coaches, they know me really well on a personal level as well, and they know um, what I like, what I don't like, and how to encourage that kind of thing. So and. I remember watching you fight on Cage Gladiators because I used to go to them shows. And I remember, I might be wrong, I might be wrong here, but did you get up kicked and knocked out? And that, But it was an illegal one. You was on your knee or something like that. I did, I right, off one Lee. And then, did you end up winning that fight? I ended up, uh, ended up a draw. I won the first round. Um, that was a fucking good fight, that man. I remember that. I was sat right at the top. You know in the Olympia, right at the top. How's yeah. that? Yeah, I got up kicked in round one. I was winning round one, um, and I, yeah. I was standing over his guard, and I came down on him on him one knee, so he couldn't up kick me. And he, he Vaughn kicked me in the teeth, and um, <laughs> I remember Mark Goddard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, said, Are you okay? Are you okay? And I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine. And I think he ended up winning the first round ten eight because of the he got a point deducted. Um, and then I lost. I was I was out on my feet pretty much round two and three, and I can remember just throwing body kicks, chasing him about, trying to kick him, trying to kick him, trying to kick him. Um, and I, I ended up drawing, but I, I kept the belt. I retained the title on a on a draw. But it was the only time I've ever been knocked out. But I remember coming up the road that night, and I was in the service station at a, at Gretna, and I remember walking into the female toilets. Um, and the, the guys that were me are coming in and being like, right, fucking get him in the car. Uh, it took me a wee while to get out of that. It was good shows back then at the Olympia. There was a lot of good fighters came through the, the shows. Yeah, I should have just, I should have took a dive. <laughs> <laughs> when, was it? when was it? What year was that? It was like 2011, I think. It was around about then. Uh, I think I fought there 2009 to 2012. Um, sure good, shows, good shows then. Yeah, 2011, 19 years ago. Jesus. <laughs> Nine years ago. 19, no, no, 2000, I thought you were saying 2001 there. 2011, <laughs> sorry. Nine years ago. Fuck, <laughs> 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 I know. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Tom, will you, be, will you be watching the, the fights this weekend? Do you know what, right? I'm uh, I've, uh, I've just finished watching the is it on it? What channel is it on now? Is it ESPN? Uh, B- BT it Sport UK. It will be BT yeah, Sport. Yeah, so, so BT Sport. So I've never, I've never got BT Sport because my dad's got it. So I just thought, right, I just go. To, I usually just go to my dad's to watch the, the UFC, but now I can't even go to my dad's. <laughs> I'm like, wait, when did it? When? No, I can't even go to my dad's. Can I on a 
on Sunday, I'll stand, stand in the garden and watch it through the window. Or, 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 or probably, what you I'll could... probably just get the highlights on my phone or something. Well, what you could do is if your dad's got BT Sport, he's also got a BT Sport login. So you could, I probably shouldn't say this on this, but you could get your dad's BT Sport login and just watch it in the house on your phone oh, or really? something like that. Oh, yeah. I had no idea of this. Like so, I said before, I'm not, I'm, not that, um, I'm not that tech savvy. I can't do stuff like that. Yeah. I can just read well, text and just about <laughs> got Instagram. Just about. <laughs> <laughs> So Tom, what we're saying is you you're a you're a effectively uh you're an old man in a young man's body. Pretty much. Pretty well, I mean you've been talking for to me long enough now, you must you must see the old man vibes. <laughs> Coming out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's like that, but it's it's not a bad thing. That that sort of mentality fighting, yeah. and what you two were talking about there just shows how much the the mental side of fighting, how how important that is uh, to have the the right the right mind frame. And f- for you, Tom, going forward, have you heard anything of the UFC? Have you got any idea when potentially you can actually get in there and and make that debut? No, I've got no idea at this point. I don't know anything. Um, there's talks about the fire island and stuff but who knows and I'm not comfortable to be honest to train for a fight in my back garden to be honest with you no um, I th- especially on a debut and stuff uh, don't get me wrong I fucking I need the money mm. but I also need a job so yeah. I, don't, I don't want to uh, I don't want to train for a fight in my back garden it depends, you know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. It depends what it is. You can't really predict anything at this time, can you? It, it's, it's. I mean, it's the situation that I think most of, not just the country, the world around at the moment. We just not none of us have got a, a clue what's going on. So you just need to, I guess, take it week by week and wait for the call for the UFC. Then I, I would imagine. But I mean, I'm just trying to say as fit as I can, you know what I mean? Just like stay ticking over and, and doing all the rest of it. But there's only so much shit you can do in your garden. Yeah. You know what I mean? Running, stretching, sit with a kettlebell, skipping, shadow boxing. What else can you do? You know what I mean? Uh, like, that, that's, that, it's good to keep fit, but it's not fight training. So I don't really know. I don't really know. It, I have no idea. I guess I'll just cross that bridge when I come to it. How, yeah. how, how long would you like if they come and say hey, everyone's going back to normal how, and you can train normally which is is a big thing how, would you need like maybe 8 weeks 12 weeks or something you'd like? It depends on the opponent to be honest. Yes. If I'm given the same opponent I think I'd need 4 weeks. Right. But if they're going to give me someone completely different with a completely different style then I would need to switch it up I think and I need longer I don't know I don't know I've no idea like I said I'm not it's not something I've given great thought to because who knows what's going to happen and it's pointless to try to worry about what's going to happen when no one can really predict it at this point but for, for the for the small bits of thinking that I have done I have thought it pretty much depends on the style of my to be fair they should give me the same opponent because he's without a fight as well yeah, so it would really, be easier, yeah. it would be easier for them to just uh, to rematch the whole. Sorry, to just keep the same matches for the whole show. Yeah, but who knows? Who knows? We had the the same way. Uh, one of our featherweights, Danny Henry, was supposed to fight in April the twenty fifth. Um, had signed his bout agreement for the show in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, so he's he's in the same boat. They pulled the fight, and and he's he's training in the garden, running and shit like that, and. And he, he's like, if they come in, if they come and offer me that fight, I'd need maybe three weeks of sparring and then a week just to get the weight. Um, but again, yeah. you never know what the UFC is going to do. Even even without fucking worldwide pandemics, you can't. There's no logic to some of the moves that they make sometimes. And try to predict it. No, just I, I, I agree. I, I do agree. And um, like you say, it all depends. Especially with it being a debut, you you want to have it right, don't you? You know what I mean? You, yeah. need, you need to have everything right. And the guy you was training for, I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's, he's like he's had like six UFC fights, so he's a bit of a veteran that comes forward and swings. Yeah. So 
if they was to give me, for example, say he's like, he's a bit of a brawler. If they was to give me some like some Russian wrestler or something, like that'd yeah. be fucking hard work because I need to I need to have different wrestling partners, which I yeah. don't have access to right now. So, um, I, I don't really know. Like I said, I I want to fight, but I, I've got to be clever as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And especially with the debut, um, you want to get in there and you want to you want to put your best performance in. You want to do the absolute best you can and get in there against a, an opponent that you've not had proper training for is not not ideal at all. But I, I think hopefully the UFC will try and make a lot of the matches up that they, they had previously before this this shutdown and just sort of move the cards. But like James is saying, you just you just no idea what they're going to do. Yeah. I mean, I think there'll be people probably listening to this thinking, oh, well, he's a fighter, he gets paid for fighting, fucking Billy, Billy Big Bollocks like Cowboys for only just jumping with anyone. It's like, yeah, I'm trying to be the fucking best best fighter to ever walk the face of this earth. I'm not trying to be Cowboys for only or someone like that. Look at yeah. all the champions, man, through, throughout the, the history, the best champions. Like, look at GSP, look at Anderson Silva, look at Demetrius Johnson, people like that. These are all like calculated people who they don't let their ego run run the fighting and run the moves that they make. Do you know what I mean? That they're all calculated, intelligent people. They're not like um, they don't say, "Oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a fighter. I'll get in there and like show Hardy. I'm gonna start swinging with some, some guy I'm not prepared with." You know what I mean? That's that's not what I'm all about. I like to think I'm pretty intelligent. Mm-hmm. Might not come across that way, and I'm not oh, fucking. I've not got any qualifications or anything like that, but. Uh, I like to think I'm pretty switched on to stuff. And I won't I won't let my ego run stuff. Do you know what I mean? I won't let I won't let my ego jump in the way and think jump in with someone and, and not show them any respect. Someone I'm not prepared for, do you know what I mean? I I respect everyone in the UFC. Never mind in the UFC, I respect everyone who steps in who steps in a cage who is over ninety three kilos, do you know what I mean? They're dangerous. Mm-hmm. Got to prepare properly for well, that's the thing as well. The, the division you're in, a heavyweight division, it's just, <laughs> I mean, there's there's really not a big margin for error in that division. One one mistake and or one misstep and it's it could be lights out. Uh, so in your division, the margin exactly. for error is very small. Yeah, I mean, not, it's not even error most of the time. If you get it, if you're getting it with someone who's 110 kilos, you're going over. It doesn't matter who you are with them little gloves on. It does not matter who you are. You are going down if you've got them low gloves on. So you want to be as prepared as you possibly can for that. Yeah, yeah and then, then when you start throwing guys in, the, in like uh, in Ghana and stuff like that, that's, uh, <laughs> that, that, that is some scary shit. You just got to redo them. I wanna be, uh, <laughs> think I'll probably, I'll probably be injured or something if I have to fight him, I think. <laughs> probably, uh, I might have to get it, injured on that day or something like that. Is this going to be like a Darren Till Yul Romero situation then? <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what though? In all, in all seriousness, right? I don't. I'm not saying I don't think he's good because I do, but I think the way he looks helps him out a lot with his uh, with his. I don't know. Intimidates people with, mm. with the atten- Yeah, he's fucking massive. Massive black fella who's like ripped up and because a lot of the people he's fought, he's not hit him. And I'm not saying he's not got power because fuck me, he's got some power, that guy. But a lot of the people he's not hit him like clean and they've gone over. Like when he fought uh, Dos Santos and when he fought, uh, who was he, Arlovsky, he didn't, he just started throwing punches like and they, they, weren't, they weren't knocked out, but they went over. So obviously he's a scary guy when you get in there and start trading with him. Yeah, no, I'm not I saying guess. at all that he's not good because I think he really is but I think his image makes him seem better than he is the UFC is um, the UFC has marketed him really well um, and they've also the guys you talked about are, are guys who have been getting knocked out consistently for a wee while before okay. the face practice um, their chins have already pretty much gone um, and I, I think he, what you're saying is perfect. He, he's in, he's so intimidating, and when you if you listen to Joe Rogan talk about him, you think he's the greatest thing since fucking since the coming of Christ. And then you hear him talk about him going to pro boxing and what he did pro boxing and stuff, and you're like, these, these pro like decent level pro boxers with toy with him, like it'd be far too technical for him. But he, he is scary just the way he looks. With 
And even the fact that you can't speak English very well, you're like the fuck hard with dogs. The broken English thing's kind of like a Bond villain or something like that. It just adds to the, the allure, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the scariness. <laughs> oh, you're right. It's all, it's all well and good, though, isn't it? Like, sitting here or whatever, and there's plenty of critics out there who's, oh, he's not that good, he doesn't do this. It, mate, you fucking stand across that cage for me and look over <laughs> and tell me if you want to go and have a tear up with him. Yeah. yeah, it's easy to see that stuff behind the computer and stuff like that, isn't it? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of dickheads out there and you can't please everyone. That's it, mate. Um, well, listen, Tom, we, we won't take up any more of your time, mate. We, we do really appreciate you coming on and speaking to us. And I think uh, I can speak for everybody that watches the podcast. We're really, really looking forward to when we get to see you make that UFC debut. Um, I'm sure James is as well. But again, we, we appreciate your time coming on. Oh, thanks a lot. I appreciate that. I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. No, brilliant, mate. And uh, just for anybody listening to the show, obviously, as always, uh, pop on to YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button and follow the show, and you'll get to see a cool podcast like this with Tom Aspinall. So thanks very much, guys. 